The potential for a New Zealand alga culture industry is being demonstrated by a small number of entrepreneur operators. Among them is Roger Belton, managing director of Dunedin-based Southern Clams. After seven years of research and development under a special permit, he has a clear idea of the potential for a particular seaweed, commonly known as wakame, and currently classified in New Zealand as an invasive species. I've always been interested in uh, developing possibilities in the primary production sector, and sometimes they work out. Um, and uh, in particular in the last decade or so, it's become increasingly clear that uh, one thing that New Zealand's not been doing, that it could have been doing, is getting on with developing the use of our seaweeds that we have here in our quite extensive marine estate. Anduria is a species which um, is relatively new in New Zealand. It's only been here for about uh, 35, 36 years. And it's by accident that it arrives. So it's considered an invasive um, weed species. And there's been a huge amount of public money spent on trying to eradicate it, a couple of hundred million. We continue to pour taxpayer money into this um, futile mission. Um, and uh, it's actually the second most important seaweed uh, internationally in terms of volume. Is it two and a half million tonnes of it grown uh, every year. And um, we import uh, effectively under in the form of wakame and miso soup and we import most of the seaweeds that we consume, so why not use the, the resource that we've got here? We're stuck with wild harvest for the moment, and hopefully we will be able to get into marine farming of the species fairly soon, because it's so much more efficient than wild harvest. Although we've been going for seven years now, um, we're now very constrained by supply. So it's seasonal. It's only really from the end of August through till perhaps the beginning of January that we're able to harvest. It depends on where it is in the country. It's, it's an annual, so the, it disappears every year. It's quite extraordinary because it can grow up to a couple of metres length, mainly over winter, from the end of winter through. And um, the distribution around the country is such that it's usually only um, to be readily found in reasonable concentrations in semi-sheltered waters where there's reasonable current flow. This particular plant, which we've just got off Weller's Rock, is actually a very good specimen because it's probably a metre and a half long. You can see the blade is, looks very shiny and uh, the texture is good, the colour is good. And, and even with the sporophyll, which is a nice length. So we would use all parts of the plant for different purposes. We have enormous challenges just because we don't have a culture and tradition in seaweed culture. So um, we're in the ministry, we don't have a ministry which is responsible for this per se, it's part of fisheries. So far this um, project is piggybacked on, on the, the, the parent company, Southern Clams, and we've self-funded everything. We haven't sought any funding because um, the initial R&D, I think, is it's really on, on the entrepreneur to, to, to deal to that and it's not until we're confident that we're going to be able to develop a reasonable scale industry that we'll be looking for funding outside. Best case scenario would be that we'd have marine farming of seaweeds throughout the country uh, uh, according to species, different species in different habitats and that would become part of the normal co um, commercial industrial activity that we undertake in marine space. When we first started in 2006 Ting, um, because I come from China, uh, I got my Asian background and seaweed has always been part of my diet and everybody kind of knows the benefits of it, using it as food. And um, it's just one day Roger came to me and said like uh, he's interested in developing seaweed, which I find very excited because it's kind of like an undervalued food and product and resource in New Zealand. Basically, I'm trying to apply what is known overseas to New Zealand because it's, it's a different side of the um, earth and it has a different uh, environment. So I'm trying to say what actually applies and what is unique in New Zealand seaweed. This is a uh, half dried on the area, which we actually uh, it has been dried overnight, and uh, when it's fully dried. Um, 
probably in another day's time, that's what we will got. And this will can be used in miso soup and in cookings and um, end up in fine restaurants. And we also uh, use Andiria for pet food. So basically, as you can see, this part doesn't have the sporophyll and the sporophyll got cut along with other portion of the seaweed and it got frozen into blocks. At the very beginning, we deal with kilos, and now we are doing uh, tens of tons at the moment. But we do have a demand now of hundreds of tons, which we couldn't meet, apparently. And uh, in the ideal world, I would like to have a, a, I would like to say marine farms of seaweed, which will have a productivity of uh, 72 tons per hectare, according to overseas experience. That would definitely be uh, enough to meet, meet the demand and uh, make the industry grow. It's getting really nice and quite crunchy around the edges, isn't it? Yeah. So this From the factory here, we do two products for the Wakamu. We do a dried food grade product, which is the stipe and the blade. And then we do a frozen product, which gets directed into pet food, into fertiliser and into compost. We've been doing it on an R&D basis for a really long time. Um, at the end of 2020, I put together a new website for the clam company and on it I put that we were doing seaweed as well. And since that moment, uh, about half the inquiries I get through the website are for seaweed. And it's all sorts of people. It's, it's cooks who want some for their restaurant. It's home chefs who, who, who just want a stable supply of wakame that they can have for themselves. It's companies who are looking for fertiliser, farmers who are looking for a, an alternative stream of seaweed for stock feed. Unfortunately, there's next to no food grade seaweed available that's produced in New Zealand. And, and it's very hard to find somewhere who does it. In terms of the value, there's gonna be quite a bit there if we can get it to scale. It sort of seems like it's going to be very important to New Zealand and food production as a whole. We know that it's a huge business overseas. Wakame is the second most farmed seaweed outside of nori, which is used for sushi in, in the world. And we think that there should be, you know, enough, certainly enough for our business, and if not, several others as well. 